Welcome builders, Andy is here and welcome to a sawmill medieval style tutorial using the easy Minecraft 5x5 building system. It has a saw and a water feel. Uh, a water feel? No, a water f wee wheel. Really? It's got a wheel? Okay, listen. <laughs> if you want to build this, if you like the inspiration you get from my kind of videos and tutorials, then hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tap the bell for instant notifications about my videos. I think it's about time we got this built. Okay, so to get started in building this sawmill, I recommend you have the sun behind you, especially if you've got shaders on like I have on this PC version of Minecraft. Anyway, grab some polished andesite, some oak wood slab and some oak wood. We're going to start with some little shapes. We're going to learn these shapes first. So it's uh, two up the way like that. Come along, miss three. Two up the way, miss three, two up the way. We're making a little five by five shape. Seal in these little gaps here. It's a little five by five andesite foundation for the house. That's what we've made just here. And we can finish it off with some oak wood slabs like that. The other shape we're going to need is made of oak wood and it's exactly the same. A little gap of three to make this little five by five shape like this. And again, your Ocus Woodus Slavis right there. So these are our two basic shapes that we're going to use and a little inset picture I'm putting in the video right here should help you, but we're just gonna start with four of these in a row. So there's one, two, three, Four. And you can see how each one overlaps itself in the middle like that. Then right here, we're going to go for another one like that. And that creates that little shape there. And this is going to be the main house for the sawmill owner. And then we're going to add some wooden frames. And this time it's going to be six wooden frames in a row. So here's one I'm going to go there. You can see this one really just joins on to the andesite, but doesn't replace the andesite. We're going to go for another one right there. Again, it's just adding on. So that's two wooden frames so far, three wooden frames, four, and then the wooden frame itself, five and six, they're completely wooden frames themselves. The other ones were kind of just joining on to the andesite. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six more wooden frames, just like the picture. And then we're going to go a row of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And then we're gonna add on three more. So one, two, three. And that is the basic shape, the basic frame of the sawmill complete. Next, we're gonna build up the main house for the sawmill owner. So you're going to need a spruce door or any door you like, actually. Spruce is my favorite right now, glass. A uh, brick slab and stairs, bone. Now, you'd, if you haven't got much bone blocks, you could use wool or white concrete or even granite if you wish. Uh, oak wood and ochus wood slabus. Right, we're going to start in this corner here and we're going to come up on the corner. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. And we're going to come across the top as well with some horizontals like that. I love these wooden blocks. They just different directions. They look different. <laughs> so, so so subtle, so simple. Been there from the start, still love it. Bone blocks all the way over here on the walls. Again, could be wool. Wool looks great as well. Like that. And then we're going to uh, slap in some windows all over the place. We'll decide where the doors go a little bit later on. And on the top, I'm going to add in some slabs like that so that is the basic house block there we go so we're going to need four more of these now as usual i'm going to speed things up by going boom 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 with me magics and there we go just take a little week around here a little peek we can see exactly what has happened now we need to decide where to put the doors. So I'm going to put a door right here, I think, and a door right here looks pretty cool as well. Again, if you want to recess the doors, you can. 
like that to provide a little bit more depth in the build, it is entirely up to you. On the inside as well, you're going to need to remove the inside walls as well. You could remove them all if you wish, like that, or you could leave some intact and put a little door in there for a bit of privacy in this room. And this is maybe the front entrance. We'll open this up as well. So there we go. If you put one little door there. So that's the inside complete. Now we can move on to the roof. So the key blocks are here and here, as usual. If you get them in the right place, everything should be pretty straightforward. Let's just spam this along here like this, and we'll get to this end, and then these key blocks go in exactly the same like that. So let's build this roof up nice and quick. It shouldn't take too long. Hope you're having a good day. I am. It's pretty sunny here in Yorkshire, where I live in England. It's a nice day. We're going to the post office soon, and then I'm going to <laughs> The gym as well. I'm gonna go for upside down. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, while this video is rendering, I've got the post office and the gym. Come back from the gym and I'll be ready to work on the thumbnail and upload it and then get working on my next video. So that's that, like that. We're gonna do that for the middle. And then we need more roof on this side, like this. Upside down, upside down. Let's go in here, upside down, upside, like that. There we go. Um, we're going to have some more roof on this section here, so I'm going to miss out that bit right now and just concentrate on this bit of roofing along here like this. And we did a row of upside downers. Sounds like a band. The upside downers. Please put your hands together. Give a big warm welcome for the upside downers. Okay, and then we're going to go like that. Um, this little gap here at the end, you could fill up, I guess, with some more bone block like so. Let's put on a little twiddly bit here and here. Standard Minecraft roof, you should be good at this. You can put your own twiddly bits on as well. Everyone's twiddly bits are their own business, to be honest. Right, let's put these there. Cool, and slavalicious time. So that's a primary roof. Now we can get the hipped roof Done. I'll just take you one more time around the primary roof. You could add in some dormer windows as well for an extra little bit of detail. Okay, so the key blocks are again at the top of the logs, upside down bricks like that, and everything else should just flow pretty nicely like this. This one's going to turn there like that, and this one turns like that. Pretty straightforward. Shouldn't be any difficulties with this little roof. Boom. Boom. And we'll just carry on like this. Oh, so what happens here? We'd put that one there and that one uh, there. That works. This one here, this one here, and then turn. Two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. We've got to go upside down there. Don't forget your bone or your rule or whatever you've got. I haven't bothered with the upside down blocks, as you can see in there. It's kind of cramped in here anyway. And then we're going to go like that. And we're going to go for the brick slab right here. Excellent. All right. Pause the video there and complete all that if you're watching and following along. I know a lot of you are, which is just fantastic. I love it. Um, let's just keep the video rolling and we're going to grab some more ingredients. So we're going to go for a bit of detail here. We're going to grab on spruce fence and spruce gate. I'm also going to grab some temporary blocks as well. We're going to spam these spruce fences on all the corners like that, where the roof comes down on all the corners. I've got the sun in my eyes, like that. And then also wherever there's a, a wooden beam coming down as well. Also the corners are a great place to put these as well, like that. So yeah, we've got to go there and there there and that's pretty much it right now it comes the temporary blocks here so we can put the gate blocks on and these gate blocks just help to break up the the look of this build make sure it looks a little bit less flat and plain but I do like how it's still kind of a mojangy 5x5 villager type look to the 5x5 building system so this looks minecrafty boom, boom. And 
and then around here like that. Oops. And then, boom, 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 boom. and then all I'm going to do is get rid of the blue, and we'll be ready for the next stage. Next, I'm going to pick up some oakwood slabs, birch fence, oakwood stairs, more oakwood logs, a power flot, and a couple of saplings of your choice. Starting with the power flots, I'm just going to add a little teeny tiny touch of decoration to the build here. Starts to put a bit of detail in, brings a place to life. Just this little uh, touch like that. I do like that. Just adds that little splash of color and immediately your build is looking good as well. People are wondering what you're building, then just adding that detail reassures them straight away. I'm gonna add some little stairs in here like that. So a couple of logs in those positions and some stairs. Maybe you can come up with a better stair design, but I think this is the way that the sawmill owner would come into the build up these stairs like this and go into the door like that. I'm going to add some birch fences. I like mixing and matching all different types of wood. You can imagine the sawmill owner having lots and lots of different types of wood lying about and just kind of building the property with whatever was lying about. So I'm going to add in, so we've got one, two, three on the birch high coming across and down like that. I'm just going to wrap this little fence around the property like that. Bring it around the corner and finish it right about there. So the idea is we're gonna have the big saw right here and a big shed for logs here and then kind of the water mill that powers it over, over round about here, I guess, is gonna be where the water's flowing. At the back, we're gonna have a place where horses, I would imagine, would be able to drag up, drag up the, um, the logs, just drag them along. I've seen real horses do this, uh, big shire horses drag huge logs through the forest in kind of a forest park adventure uh, center in Scotland. So there we go, we're gonna have, um, hmm, hmm. I wonder, hold on, let's bring these, sorry, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My bad, my bad, let's bring these down already. Let's bring these down to this kind of level like that this already there we go and then we're gonna come down a level like this we're gonna bring it out in twos like this just a gentle slope like that same down here very very simple wooden slope like that if you want to make it look a little bit fancier you could do that with absolutely no harm done whatsoever. I think that looks okay. We could do the same kind of thing over here. I guess this looks kind of cool. Yeah, just really keep it super simple. A little slope up and in like that. So you should be able to see that my inventory has changed. I've got spruce wood slabs and spruce fences. Gonna build the woodshed. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four on that corner just there and same over here one two three four and then seal these across at the top with more fences this is going to build the frame the whole wooden frame of the woodshed find the middle one and come up another three one two three and then of those three new blocks find the middle and add two each side like that there we go, frame being constructed. We're gonna add on two here, 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 and here. So this makes a nice triangular truss. You could put some in the middle, but I'm just gonna put them at either end. I'm gonna put them at this end and this end. You could put more triangular trusses in the middle if you thought that adds a nice bit of detail. Thinking about it, I think it probably would. Um, okay, so is that, oh, we had to do a little bit more, actually. We're gonna come down here and here like that for just a touch a little touch more detail we're going to come up here here and here one two three like that and then just bring these in by one as well so it makes this strong strong looking shape like that we'll just actually come in here as well with another two like that and over here on this side, one and two. So we need to do the same on the other side. One of the troubles with this is, of course, that, yeah, 
this roof is in the way. <laughs> so that's not so cool. So let's see what happens when we, when we try it over on this side. There we go, it's done quick as a flash. Just finishing things off like that. Oh, the, the very last thing you can do is add on one more slab like that. One more, I guess it's a lower slab right here. And that makes a nice, hopefully, you think, a nice looking wood shed. And there we go. I love the way that wood just interacts with the brick roof. I love that. Just this little complicated section. Um, you can add more roof trusses. These are kind of rude, roof, rude? <laughs> roof trusses. You could add more coming up here as well if you wanted. Probably missing out the ones in the middle and just having them here and here if you wish. That might look quite smart to have a few more roof trusses. Might make this place look a little bit more realistic. I'll leave that up to you. I might do them off camera. Right, now we're going to turn our attention to the water wheel and the saw. So the saw gets moved back and forward by a special wheel which gets turned by the water wheel. So let's build the frame for the spindle. Um, I'm going to grab some ingredients. Let me run through quickly what I've got here. So I've got dark oak, birch fence, oak wood slab, a button, spruce wood, cobblestone stairs, cobblestone slab, and some spruce wood stairs. These are the ingredients for this next little section. Right, I'm gonna put some little spacers in. So spacer, spacer, spacer. Hopefully you can see exactly where they go. And that leads us over to here where we're gonna come up by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can get rid of our little spacers here. A gap of three, one, two, three, and then it's up by eight again. Gap of three, it's another five by five section. Another pleasing on the eye five by five section like that. One down from the top, we're gonna to just make the frame like so. There we go. And then around the outside of that frame, we can actually put a little bit of detail. I don't often do this, but I like this here. Rough and ready, carpenters, nails, and I don't know, joints. It's, it's joined together, okay? <laughs> Same down here, but uh, two off the ground. So space of two off the ground, we're gonna make this little cute platform for the the big spindle or rod that gets turned by the water wheel and again we can go for a bit of button madness around there for that smidgen of detail ocus wood is slabus in here and we are getting there so that is the frame for the spindle so the spindle is going to be Hmm, it's gonna be 10 blocks long in total. So there's one, two, three. We do want it to stick out by one. So there's one, two, three blocks. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is the big spindle we can imagine being turned. Right, we're gonna hold the spindle down with some of these cobblestone slabs, like that and like that, and a little stairs I should say and then slabs on top. Birch fence there for a little bit of detail. Boom, 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 like that. That's not bad. Right, the feel on this end that's going to move the saw backwards and forwards. What we're actually going to need is a block I haven't got. Spruce wood planks. One, two, three, four. And then spruce wood stairs. One, two, three, four like that and then a button goes there and that's what I'm going to attach the saw to so I think we should actually do the saw right now because to face it probably why you clicked on this video is because you saw the saw and that's why you want to build this um, I guess my jokes are really just cutting edge anyway gonna pick up these ingredients what do we have here I didn't even run through them chiseled stone bricks birch wood or whatever logs you want to trim and cut a button spruce fence, uh, iron bars, and oak fence. So let me explain how this saw works. First of all, we're gonna go, is it oak fence we want? Yeah, oak fence, we're gonna go one, two, three, like that, and then we're gonna go for the chiseled stone bricks. So the chiseled stone bricks act like a little kind of fulcrum or pivot point, because you can see this is attached to the wheel. So as the wheel goes round, like that, would it go that way or that way? I think it goes that way. Then this would get pulled around like that. So it could be over there, which will pull this back and pull the saw, because the saw is gonna be attached. So you're gonna put on 
two blocks like that, one up and across, one down and across, and that's where we're gonna put in our nice big saw. I think four blocks for the saw. One, two, three, four for the iron bars. There we go. You can provide a little bit of support for this fulcrum here. It's gonna pivot point, something like that would be very basic. I think you should probably add to it something like that would look kind of cool. There we go, with some spruce fences, holds it in place. So you can see the saw going backwards and forwards, hopefully as this wheel turns. And they had these sawmills right back, water-powered sawmills can date back, there's evidence, the third century BC. Pretty amazing. I'm gonna put some logs here that are being chopped like that, and maybe one on the ground like that. It's been chopped into little blocks of three, and you can put some logs here that are being lined up ready to go, ready to be chopped up, been, already been dragged up here by the horses. There we go. Cool. Um, right, so that is the saw. Now we're on to the slightly complicated water wheel. Here we go, water wheel design. So I'm gonna use uh, dark oak stairs, Trapidoris maximus oak fence, spruce wood slabs, and a button. So, whew, breathe in. This, we can do this, we could do this, everybody. We can do this. Okay, starting here, we're gonna go up two, like that, and then add on two on the side, like that. Pretty straightforward so far. Uh, actually, we're gonna make that um, one, two, three at the top, and then another one here and here, like that. And then we'll do the same again on the underneath. Just um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then a three. One, two, three. Oh, we are going to dig out, dig yourself out a channel for the water to flow into. That'll be some sort of channel or river. And the water needs to come along from here. So there needs to be a hill or a mountain or like a little gangplank bringing the water, a walkway bringing the water along like that. These little gaps here can get sealed in. One, two, three, four. So it should look like that so far. Goody, goody. And then we're gonna add in another one here and another one in here. And that should make us a nice, fairly round shape. And then on top of all of these, we're gonna place another one, bringing us right to the end of this dark oak log. Boom, boom, boom. So this is my water wheel design. You may have your own better, uh, in your opinion, water wheel design, but this is what I like to go with. So I'm gonna go here, like that with those ones. And then here, we're gonna go like that with these ones. And then under here, we're gonna go like that with these ones. So it looks like that so far. So far, so good. Um, oh, forgot these ones. These go boom, boom, like that. Okay, so far. Uh, under here, I'm going to go and place upside down like that. There we are. And then over here, these are gonna be turned. So we're making kind of these air buckets, which the water can go down, the water can go down that bucket, down that bucket, down that bucket. And then these buckets under here should be upside down. The buckets are getting hit by the water. That's the idea. These ones should definitely be upside down. This one I'm going to turn and have it face like that. So a combination of these dark oak stairs and trap doors. Um, I'm gonna place some temporary blocks there because I want to do that with these ones. So by the time that one gets all the way over there, it should be the right way up, as if as if this thing was turning. This one can go like that as well. And up here, I'm gonna go temporary block, temporary block, boom, boom, like so. And again, temporary block here and here, so we can go like that. So that is, you pause the video there, you should be able to see exactly how I have done that. Now I'm gonna add some trap doors onto this to make the little bucket shapes. So that's a little bucket there that could catch the water hopefully, a little bucket there. Um, we're gonna go for one underneath here, like that. <clears throat> like that, that's good, that's working. Um, we're gonna add some in here. This is gonna be like that, I think, is that right? Oops. 
No, 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 is that right? No, <laughs> why the hell did I do that? No, right through on this one here. Don't, there we go, little bucket there. Um, same on this one right here. This should be easier, easier to place. Um, no bucket on that one, or that one, or that one, weirdly. Or that one. That's the end of the buckets, actually. So the bucket's kind of on those sides only. Hmm, a bit suspicious. We're going to just seal the deal on the sides here. You can add on more trapdoors if you think it's necessary. I don't think it is. Um, I guess you could add some here, like that, right? Yeah, that would make kind of a little bit of sense if they were on that one. It's as if those trapdoors were in there, but we can't get to them in there because of the fence posts are in the way. So there we go, just added on a few more. Um, I guess we could add these ones in as well, like that. That makes little buckets. Imagine if they were, the water will go in there, you see, once it's round to, hopefully, round to that side. Now that doesn't make sense. These ones don't have buckets. Uh, okay, well, you might just go bucket. We'll do it any way you want. And put that there. There, there. Okay, this is my water wheel. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I don't care, okay? It's my water wheel. It's my water wheel and I'll cry if I want to. Um, I definitely want to have some here to make that bucket. The water's going to come along and catch in these buckets and turn the wheel. In my imagination, okay? There we go. Water wheel complete. And that'll do there. Hope you like the little bits of detail and you can follow them along, no problems. Thanks for watching everyone. Ciao, ciao, may the books be with you.